So probably at this point in the school year, state testing is over or will be very soon. And you are thinking about all of this time that you need to fill with engaging and meaningful learning, but you've already covered your standards because, well, you had to get all of the skills in before testing, right? So what now? Over the next two weeks here on the podcast, I am going to be sharing some ideas for activities that you can plan for your students during these last few weeks of school before summer break that allow you to bring in some real world experience without the pressure of assessment. Isn't that what it should be like all year long? Maybe someday I will be able to have a hand in making a change in the entire education system. But for now, stay tuned for some great end-of-year activity ideas. Welcome to Upper Elementary Simplified, the podcast where busy and overwhelmed teachers find thoughtful ideas to get students engaged in meaningful learning experiences. Hi, I'm Dana Rodebush, former fifth grade classroom teacher and founder of Teacher Tech Studio. I'm here to share practical tips and strategies that will help you grow as an educator. If you are a tired upper elementary teacher searching for ways to cut down your planning time while boosting student engagement, you are in the right spot. Are you ready? Let's simplify. I am super excited to introduce you to my guest today. I have Christine DeArmit from Reading Teacher Buzz here with me today to give you some great ideas for activities that you can use in the days and weeks after state testing is over that will keep your students engaged and content focused so it doesn't feel like babysitting. Christine has been teaching for 24 years, and she is currently a reading specialist in grades three through five. Over the past few years, she has really noticed that some of the fun has been taken out of classrooms due to the demands of state testing, and her passion is to bring that fun back. Let's welcome Christine to the show. Christine, welcome to the show today. Please tell my audience a little bit about you and how you serve the education community. Hello, everyone. Uh, My name is Christine, and thank you for having me on your show today. I am a reading specialist in grades three, four, and five. I also have a master's degree in reading. Um, Over the years, I've really noticed that a lot of the fun and enjoyment and student engagement has gone to the wayside due to testing and um, teachers trying to prepare the students for testing. And so lately, I really felt that the fun needs to come back into the reading instruction, both for teachers and students. Absolutely. You are 100% right that testing just really takes it out of us, both teachers and students. So let's first start out by discussing your passion about bringing fun back into the classroom. So we all know that the quote unquote system drains a lot from teachers and students, but I would love it if you could talk a little bit about your personal experience with this and how that has inspired your passion to bring fun back into classrooms. Yeah, of course. Um, With this new like science of reading research all coming to the forefront, um, my job has changed a little bit and they really made me focus on phonics, phonics, phonics. Well, you know, phonics is all well and good, but it gets quite boring, both again, for students and teachers. So I'm like, how can I make this where I'm still teaching when I'm supposed to be teaching yet make it more fun for um, the students? And of course, for me, because I personally, I was getting bored. Um, So I just really started um, thinking and okay, what can I do? What can I change? What can I add? What can I do to make this a lot more fun for these kids? And that's kind of where it grew from. I love that. I love that. Anytime you can bring fun into it and just um, inspire those kiddos in any way, that's great. I love it. So I'm excited. The activity ideas that you are going to share today are really going to be great for teachers to use in those final weeks of the school year. So after testing is over, when it really almost feels like babysitting. 
but I know you also find these activities useful throughout the school year as well because you have designed them around the various content areas, which I'm super excited about. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired you not only to bring fun into the classroom, but to do it in a way that you are also practicing with different content? Yes, of course. Um, before I became a Title I reading specialist, um, I had taught first grade and third grade, all subjects, self-contained, all day long. And I really found that there just wasn't enough time in the day to get everything done. So that's when I really started to try to integrate like science and math, social studies and writing, um, language arts with everything. And that's kind of what inspired me to make resources for teachers because I know there's not enough time in the day. Um, in our um, school right now, I know that our math teacher teaches science and our um, language arts teachers teach social studies. So I still know even even if you're you know, um, teaching one subject, you might be teaching two. So I really thought that trying to integrate a lot of the resources that would help teachers save time. Absolutely, absolutely. And not only is there not enough time in the day to get all the content covered, teachers really don't have all of that, you know, enough time to really plan. So I'm super excited to hear about all of the fun activities that you have already planned for them. So let's start out with your reading activities. So what ideas do you have for teachers to incorporate fun into their reading instruction? Oh, yes, I have some great ones. The first thing is Reader's Theater. I know we all know Reader's Theater. However, um, take it up a notch. Um, I have had students um, write own scripts. Um, I have given them, you know, a history topic or a science topic or um, different um, content area topics and say, hey, write the script, write a script that you guys can act out. That really worked very good. Or you can write your script. Um, I do have a free resource for your listeners. Um, I do a differentiated reading scripts because I know in class, you're going to have kids that read above grade level at grade level and below grade level. So I really try to include that in my reader's reader scripts, but we'll, um, I have that for your listeners. Um, the next uh, activity I have, I like to call it Poetry Cafe. Um, back when I went to college many years ago, we had this um, cafe and we went in to get coffee. Well, there was people reading poetry there and people doing like acting. And it was just this really cool experience. You know, you're going to college, you're stressing out, but to like take a break and, and go experience this. So I was like, how can I bring that into the classroom? So I have my students... Um, you know, group them up. We get out all our poetry, you know, books. Um, Shelf Silverstein's great for this. Um, a lot of those funny authors. And then they pick one or two poems that they can act out. And I let them um, spend time in groups making props and practicing and all that. So then we playing like a poetry cafe day where of course you have to look into student allergies and stuff before you bring any food in but I bring in like chocolate milk or donuts or something fun and then I really um we have fun with this the students perform it the other students are I really encourage good listening skills um and we just have a blast um oh, I love that oh, that sounds so yes, fun yeah I do Another activity I have is a wax museum. Um, you can do this a couple different ways. Have your students research um, a historical figure, um, or it could be a famous person, Taylor Swift by, you know, example. Um, I have a simple research um, biography resource in my TPT store um, if you need help with this. But um, you have the research have them write a short biography, then you can do this two ways. I've done this where we take a poster board and we cut out like a circle for their head and then they decorate the poster board as the person. Or you can have them have like a trifold board and um, put their information on there. Either way, it works perfect. Then you would split your class up half and half and then set up one half around the room and then your other half would go around and listen to them and then they swap and then, you know, the one half does the, the presentation and the other half listens. They love this. I've also invited parents to this too. We actually have done this as a, as a third grade level kind of thing and did it in the auditorium and the parents loved it too. So it's a great 
great resource um, oh my to goodness. do. Yes. When I was in fifth grade, um, whenever I taught fifth grade, on when I was in fifth grade, we did the American Revolution Wax Museum. And that was super fun. So we did the same way you're saying. So we had them cut holes out for their yes. head and decorate yeah. their, their posters. And they were so funny. They yes. loved it. The kids had a blast. And we did. We invited, I want to say that we invited um parents like more in the evening and then that school day we had the whole cl- the whole school come through and tour so How we set fun. up like a schedule yeah like a rotation schedule like first yes. grade comes at this time and second grade yes. you know and the the younger kids loved it because then they were looking forward to fifth grade they get to do this and so it was really, really fun. So I love that idea. Sorry to, to break in. No, it's go great. ahead and continue. Yeah, yes. Um, one last thing for language arts I have is vocabulary charades. And I think most teachers do know about this, but the key to this game is to really find words that kids could act out. And if they can act it out funny, even better. So um, that's my last uh, reading slash language arts resource that I have today that those sound so fun and I know you mentioned that you had the reader's theater um for my listeners so I will definitely link that in the show notes if you are interested in that okay I love those ideas so I would love it if you would go ahead and talk a little bit about the activities that you have for science and social studies um, for science, um, really dive into the STEM activities. Students really learn a lot hands-on. Um, we've done design a bird feeder before um, for Earth Day, where we bring in a lot of junk, basically trash, and we design bird feeders. Um, you can have students research local birds, um, what they eat, and then... Um, you know, research ways to turn like a milk jug or something into a bird feeder. The students really love it. Um, I'm able to put it outside my window. So then when students, you know, they can see the birds that they they just love that. Um, I've also done a biome habitat where um, students research a biome like the tundra or the rainforest. And um, they create like a diorama of um, the shoebox. And we, I always, I I hesitate to ask parents to purchase things just because, you know, I know parents um, have sometimes don't have the money. So what we do a lot of times is I have them make it out of construction paper or, you know, paper, have them draw. Um, I do a lot of um, on the board. Okay. Here's how you draw a pine tree or here's how you draw this. And I'm not really an art teacher, but I try. (laughs) So um, (laughs) they, they love that. Um, For social studies, this is, I love this idea, and my students year after year, again, when I taught third, they love this. I created a market day, and this teaches all different kinds of activities, group, you know, getting along in a group, bartering, um, money, um, economics, want, demand, or supply, demand, wants, needs. Um, So what we do for this is I give them some ideas, like making friendship bracelets or braiding hair. But if you're going to have like braiding hair or or nail polish, of course you have to get parents permission first, but um, they, I split them up into groups and then they decide what type of activity or goods or service basically that they're going to do for this market day. And then of course you give them time to be able to create, you know, my hair braiders or whatever they practice, you know, Um, I even have them maybe draw different designs of, different braids. Um, My nail polish people, you know, have different designs of what they can do. So each group is engaging in creating their goods or service. Then um, we have what's called a market day. And um, so we set up a market all around the room. And usually the groups, I would say, are two to three to four. You don't want to have really large groups. So then what I do is, okay, two people man your booth while the other one or two go around and shop. And again, you can do this a couple of different ways. Um, I've done fake money before. Um, we've just done bartering. So they learn how to barter. Okay, is this worth 
this or is, you know, that kind of thing. And the students have so much fun with this. They, they love this and they talk about it for like weeks. Um, Another idea I had was macaroni maps. When I taught map skills, I had um, students bring in, and actually the PTO was good for this too, uh, bring in different types of macaroni. There's so many different types of macaroni. And then um, we would have, I would have them make a key, like the long spaghetti is probably going to be a road. Um, you know, the elbow could be, um, I don't know, a church or a park or something, and then have them create their map and the thing I grade is you know the key do they have the key do they have you know the compass rose do they have different types of whatever I was teaching to make sure they had that again they loved it um and and that's just yeah they they love it that sounds so fun I love that I love that and back to the market day I could see that like being a school-wide thing too yes. you know bring in yes. the little kids just like we did with the with our wax museum I think that that would be super fun um, for the whole school to do. So I love that. And you're hitting those economic standards yes. mm -hmm. and you're bringing in real world. So I love that. And yes. since we're talking about after testing, but after testing time, that's a perfect time, especially yes. since it's kind of getting um, warmer outside. You can even do some, some of your market outside. I'd love it. I think that sounds like a great, great idea. So that brings us to math. So let's hear about your activity suggestions that you have for a math project. There are so many math projects. I just focused on one today, but um, project-based learning is, is where it's at. Um, so what I did was give my students a budget and um, we talked about vacations. If you could go anywhere in the world, you know, where would you go? And then I showed them different websites like Travelocity, Expedia. Um, and we, you know, researched different. You really have to guide a little bit with this, though. It's not just kind of like let them go. You really have to guide each step of the way. So first, you know, we decided are you going to drive or are you going to fly? And then, you know, we did that. And then are you going to stay in a hotel or Airbnb or, you know, that kind of thing. And then once we get there and they see how much money they have left, Left, then we talk about activities there. So it really, again, real world, ex real world experiences, um, but it really gives them a great idea of um, how math is applied in the real world. Yes. So when am I ever going to use this? That question gets to be answered right there. I love that. Yes. So, and then you also have some non-content based games. So can you tell the listeners a little bit about that? Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, this game is similar to Minute to Win It. I like to call it the Blast of Fun Review Minute Games. It's very fun for the students. You can use any topic to review. Um, so first, what you need to do is find some minute activities that your students can do in the classroom. I do have a free resource for this. Um, in, we'll link that down below. Um, then you create your task cards or your questions for this activity. Then you would split your kids up into groups of maybe two, three, and then you go through each group and you ask them a question. If they get that question right, then they get to do this minute activity. Um, it could be like hula hoop for a minute or, you know, um, put a ping pong on a spoon and, and do a relay race for a minute. Another idea is to use a spoon to pick up marshmallows, see how many you can get um, in a minute. Um, you could take a straw and a pom pom and blow it across the table, how many or how far they can get in a minute. Um, make a paper airplane and see how far they can throw it in a minute. There's several, several things you can do for students, but it really engages them because number one, it gets them out of their seat, it gets them active you know, acting, you know, acting out things or doing things. And it's really reviewing test material that you can use with any content. Um, there really is no winners to this game, but, you know, the winner is that they all get to review content and they all get to have fun. So yeah. I love that. So you have like predetermined questions that you ask. And then when they get that answer correct, that's when they get to play the yes. game. Yes. The one I minute game. That. Yes. Yes. I love that. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. So I know that you have all of these activities that you've talked about kind of compiled together into a cheat sheet with some supplemental materials and some other um, activities. 
available to the listeners for free. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, I have. I've talked a lot about different activities and I have compiled a cheat sheet of all the activities that I talked about and just quick little um, reminders of how each activity is done. Um, I even have included a couple of the freebies. They're linked in the cheat sheet and a couple of resources if you needed to see more. I have a blog post and it's called 16 activities to do after testing is over. Um, we'll link that down in the show notes too, but um, buzz on over to that blog and um, find some really cool activities also there. I love that. So thank you so much for all of these great activities that teachers can use during this um, after testing season time, whenever it just really a lot of times feels like babysitting, but um, this will, this will be really good giving them some great ideas to bring some more engagement cover a little bit more content. And I just think that's going to be really great. And so all of the um, activities and the cheat sheet and everything that you have mentioned, we're going to link down in the show notes. So is there anything else that you want to add that we haven't already covered? Just have fun, have fun with your students. You know, it's that last month of, you know, that you're going to have these kids in your class. So just have fun. I love that. That's great advice. That's great advice. And go ahead. I know you mentioned your blog, but let's go ahead and um, tell the listeners where all they can find you online if they want to connect with you further. Sure. Um, my blog is readingteacherbuzz.com. Um, teachers pay teachers, reading teacher buzz. I am on Instagram as reading teacher buzz. And I do have a Facebook group, um, actually called it the reader teachers lounge. So or the reading teachers lounge. Um, so I'm on all those. Yeah. Lots of different platforms. Very yes. good. So I will yes. link all of those places as well in the show notes. So um, listeners will be able to find that in the show notes for this episode. So Christine, thank you so much for being here and for offering all of these ideas for activities. I really appreciated talking to you today about this. Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for listening this week. And I will see you back here next week where we will talk about even more end of year activities. See you next week. Same time, same place. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Upper Elementary Simplified. I hope you were able to take away something useful that will help you grow as a teacher. I do have a quick favor to ask before you go. If you are enjoying the podcast, please let me know by leaving me a review. It really does make a difference because reviews impact search results, which helps me to expand my reach to other educators. Plus, I love to read my listeners' comments. Until next time, keep life simple.